Hello my gorgeous makeup loving friends, I hope you are having a fantastic day and a great start to your weekend. My name is Teresa and I love all things makeup, beauty and skincare. So on the weekends I like to hang out with you guys and talk about the new makeup releases. Now I've been a little bit remiss this week, I would normally post some shorts about new makeup releases, however I have been unwell. You can probably tell that from my voice. I have had a chest infection and COVID, yay! I'm slightly returning back to normality but a massive thank you for everyone who has been checking in. And and just bearing with me during all of this, but people were still tagging me in new content. So a massive thank you to everyone who helped me keep on board and put together an episode for this week. Your names are being displayed right now. Huge thank you. As always, a massive thank you to my YouTube community member. You're fantastic. You know the drill. I think you're you're rather wonderful. I like the cut of your jib. It is finely tailored, etc. etc. Massive thank you. I do need to do a live with you guys soon. I keep saying that every week, but it's just like everything. <laughs> It just keeps falling apart <laughs> and I basically come straight from work to do this so it is what it is. Anyway, there's a couple of things to talk about but you know the general drill, please do get yourself a libation, a beverage, um, whether it's hot, cold, in between, I don't really care, I've got tea. I did just finish up some herbal tea but this time it's caffeinated so make sure you stay hydrated and let's just get straight into it. The first thing that I want to talk about, it's not really a new makeup release but it's... <sighs> It's makeup news and I'll be honest with you lads, I'm really disappointed about this. So Be Perfect Cosmetics, as you guys might know, is an Irish-based makeup brand and they are also essentially a retailer where they sell on other brands as part of their kind of like umbrella company. But they've basically announced, hey, we're doing a meet and greet with James Charles and they're starting to essentially stock his stuff. And the meet and greet is starting from October onwards and it seems that it's going to be essentially happening across Ireland and the UK. I gotta say I'm kind of disappointed. Whatever your feelings might be on Be Perfect, I quite like them. I've always had like a soft spot for them because they're an Irish brand but like I don't know like supporting somebody who has the past that he has and who has admitted to the things that he has I don't know, there comes a point where I'm like lads, money. I, I get that money is great. We like it. It pays our bills but like surely ethics you know and they even have like tickets on sale they say your 10 pound ticket will be fully redeemable on products in store on the day and your ticket guarantees a meet and greet with james for strictly one person per ticket and for anyone that misses out on tickets we will be giving out golden tickets at random to meet james at each of our meet and greets mm. no thanks no thanks no thank you, no thank you, no thank you, no thank you. Uh, beyond even just the James Charles of it all, I don't really hear anyone talking about this brand beyond the controversy etc. I am, I'm really disappointed in Be Perfect but they also continued to stock like Jeffree Star etc despite like the hubbub around that so I know very very disappointing is all I can say and it's definitely kind of made me side eye Be Perfect. To, you know, that being said though I don't tend to buy Be Perfect unless it's like a Stacey Marie collab. Ooh, if she leaves they are in a trouble but there is some other releases to talk about. This is She Glam and this is their Crimson Butterfly collection that's obviously part of their Halloween stuff. You can get the whole collection for $50.99 but each of these are also available separately. There's the Cursed Chrysalis palette for $9.99, the Bloodline Color Changing Blush, that's right, it's PH, for $5.99, the Phantom's Kiss Lip Gloss palette for $6.99, the Onyx Kaleidoscope Lipstick for $5.99, there's three shades of Crystal Flutter Glitter Gel in the shades Cocoon, Instar, and Mimic for $4.99 each and then there's the Monarch Wings Ombre Blush and Highlighter for $6.99. Look this is perfectly Halloween, there's the reds, the blacks, it's very gothic. It's grand, nothing wrong with it. Do I see anything new and innovative in this? No, like these colour stories have been done before, they're very safe, it's grand. Let's talk about that eyeshadow palette, I mean it's $9.99, they've kind of really gone on the packaging of this where it's essentially looking like a picture frame and there's matte and metallic -y finishes. I will say that the swatches look very lacklustre and it does feel very repetitive which I know obviously happens in those more duochromatic or triochromatic palettes where you have one or two max three shades which is essentially what we're seeing here it's like reds and blacks which is fine but I feel like mm, they're a little bit tonally too close to each other there isn't anything like massively different I don't know like the price isn't bad it's $9.99 you're getting nine shades it's a dollar eleven cent per shade so like it's not bad 
it's fine. Like, <laughs> this is very similar to, I think, like, Makeup Obsessions. They did, like, a black and grey and red palette a couple of years ago. So it's fine. It's very, very safe for Halloween beyond that. I just don't think it's wildly interesting. Then there's that cheek blush thing. Now, they, they have said you can use it on the cheeks and the lips. And, of course, it's that pH thing. So you'll be absolutely shocked, shocked, my friends, to realise that it'll leave things pink. Oh, my goodness. Who'd have known? And there's so much pH this week. I can't even... Like, I'm already getting annoyed about it. And by the way, lads, I finished my steroids. <laughs> As if that was the topic of conversation. But I had to be on steroids for this chest infection. And I don't know if I had, like, roid rage or maybe it's just pH blush rage. But, like, I'm <laughs> just sitting here kind of going, what? Who, who's allowed this? Because it just seems there's a stream of these on board at the moment. And I just cannot stand them. They look fine. It's not wildly expensive, but this is just really strange. Can I also just say, <laughs> maybe it's just me, maybe it's just me, but the packaging. I am a lapsed Catholic and all I can think of is the crown of thorns that was on Jesus's head, allegedly. <laughs> Does the word allegedly work there? Who knows? That's all I can think of. I'm just like, this feels like a really weird Easter collab. Yeah, there's nothing there that makes me think of Crimson Butterfly. Like, this is a reach at best, but oh my God, the lip gloss palette. What in the kiddie makeup is this? They're like, it's lightweight, it's hydrating, it's easy to apply. Oh my God, I am stressed out. They even have that applicator in there. Look, there's nothing wrong with like having your lip glosses out like that. Like makeup artists do that all the time. You obviously can't be going around with like your components everywhere. But oh my God, this looks so childish, so kiddie. And the thing is like on the lips, it doesn't look bad. And they're doing that whole thing of like, you can customize your pouch, mix and match which I'm like okay okay I guess I mean I can't really imagine myself using that can you imagine putting that into your handbag and then customizing your lip shade as you go just being like sorry you've just had your dinner and you're gonna like sploosh out a certain amount of this and then mix it and then try and pop it onto your lips no and they've got a silicone brush in there I mean I suppose it's better than those like little q-tip things that they had at least silicone kind of makes sense there but this just feels it reminds me of my childhood of you know those dinky little sets that you get like in a magazine absolutely not they also have a black matte lipstick which I actually don't think is bad it's hard enough to get like a bullet lipstick that is black it I will say this doesn't seem to be the most impressive there's a very gray tone to it and then in other pictures it looks a lot more interesting they're obviously kind of trying to sell it in the sense of oh you can layer it over lip oil who's who's putting this over a lip oil do they mean under a lip oil I'm very confused about that and that you can layer it over pearlescent powder again are they getting over and under mixed up I'm a little bit confused the actual like lipstick itself like the way they have it indented looks really really cute like the design on the bullet component there's something about it that almost reminds me a little bit of melt cosmetics and I say that with love because it's it's actually quite nice. I don't know how well this would wear, but I mean, people don't tend to have that many options when it comes to a black bullet lipstick. So this isn't bad. I'm semi-interested in that. I'm not going to pick it up. They do say it's non-drying, which is interesting, particularly if it's meant to be more of a matte finish, because normally whenever you have a matte lipstick, it's going to give you that sort of a, a drying effect. So I'm intrigued. Then there's these glitter gels. And there's something about this, particularly the black one, that reminds me a little bit of the KBDs. Now, I'm not saying that this is a dupe by any means, right but I'd like to see this compared I just find that she glam she in whatever do not tend to swatch their stuff very well so you don't get a very good indication of what these would look like the black one is definitely interesting to me because it does remind me ever so slightly of the KVD ones that I got recently which I do need to kind of talk to you guys about at some point because they're beautiful and I don't hear anyone talking about them this is apparently a gel texture a shiny gloss you can use it alone or later which I like the idea of. I think particularly that shade Cocoon looks very, very interesting. Here's my take. They didn't need to do the eyeshadow palette. I think they could have just done these three and done it as like a little set together and that would have been fine. They could have just linked it in that way. It's not bad at all. Then I'm a little bit confused about this ombre blush highlight thing because if that weird pH blush, then they went, no, we'll have this blush, but also it's a highlighter. And it's like, for, for whom? For whom? is this a highlighter only for very pale people which you know grand but we have loads of options as it is the packaging very pretty it's grand they've done this whole like embossed design grand I, 
I, I'm, I don't care. <laughs> I think is the nicest way of saying it. I, I don't know how to sugarcoat this at the moment. Yeah, it's fine. It's a little bit like meh. Didn't need to be done. When you look at the full collection, in my opinion, there's whole chunks that could have been gotten out of or could have been gotten rid of. That pH blush, get rid of it. I want a law in place from here on out. If anyone even thinks of using a pH sort of a, a formula, whether it's lip gloss, bam, a, 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 a blush death straight away um straight away <laughs> as I said I've taken all my steroids they're gone but I just I have this thing about pH I, I don't know if it's like a slightly um traumatic thing or, or that I've just I've used pH things before and it's made me look like a clown and I think I'm just looking back on that and kind of being like oh my god I just can't deal with that so could we please get rid of the pH stuff I don't think the palette was necessary I think that lip gloss palette thing oh my god I just I just can't <laughs> it looks so dinky um I think yeah the lipstick could have gotten away with that and maybe the little gels could have gotten rid of the highlighter blushy thing they could have made this into a two, max three component set and it would have been fine. Look, I know that they're not wildly expensive. They're cheap. You know, it's $50.99 for the entire set, but you don't need to come out with the whole kitchen when you're doing a collection. It's just not necessarily. Sometimes less is more, my friends. And speaking of less is more, right, I talked about this briefly at the end of releases and rants last week where I was like, I don't want to talk about it. And do you know what? I'm in a, I'm in a rage. <laughs> <laughs> we're doing the rants portion of releases and rants and we're getting it out of the way. This is Pat McGrath doing the same collection that she does every single fucking year and I don't know how she gets away with it. I, I really genuinely don't. This is her holiday 2024 Luminous Legends. There's nothing luminous, well maybe a little bit, but there's nothing legendary about this. So she has her £15 palette for €70. Euro. That's the mega eyeshadow palette. There's two £5 palettes. There's one which is Dawn Divinity and then the other one is Starfall Seduction for €35. Euro. There's three different eyeshadow jewels. So there's Petallic Passion, Celestial Jade and Astral Noir and that's €23 Euro each. They have the Mini Lost Gloss Jewel in Nude Mood for €27. Euro. There's the Mini Matte Trans Lipstick Trio for €33. Euro. And then they have a really stupid set which is just one of the jewels, the Petallic Passion and essentially an eyeliner. And they've called it the Petallic Passion Shimmer and Smoke Kit for €30. Euro. I'm not even really going to talk about that. Let's talk about the eyeshadow palette. Oh my goodness. Yep, yeah, seen it all before. Massive deja vu. Pat McGrath's design team, what's going on there is a copy and paste. Oh my goodness, look, a purple. We've never put a purple into an eyeshadow palette before, Pat. Let's do that. Oh my God, neutrals, we've never done that before. Seriously, come on, come on. Here's the thing, Pat McGrath is an incredible artist. Let's be 100% honest, but the brand is not in line with her artistry. It, it is so far removed from who she is at a person now that I cannot figure out what is going on. There's individual shades in these that I'm like, okay, these aren't bad at all. Like if I look at that big palette, right? That blue shade, I'm looking at it and I'm like, do you know what? If that was a single, I'd kind of half think about it. The rest of it, I'm bored. I am so bored. I am so bored. I am so dead. I am deceased. And I don't dislike anyone enough to spend 70 euro on them and give them this passive aggressive gift that has been recycled. Like I agree in recycling, but not in recycling your ideas. And even if we look at the other five pan palette, the Dawn Divinity or whatever the fuck it's called, I've seen this colour story five million times from Pat before. And five million is a conservative number. I feel like I've seen it probably even more. And hey, oh my God, a purpley toned five pan palette. I mean, I guess it's a deeper tone of purple than we've had before. So we're really innovating here. Like the individual shades are fine. Again, that deep blue, I actually think beautiful, stunning, very, very pretty. But am I going to pay 35 euro for it? Absolutely not. I haven't lost my mind. The little duos, they're fine, but I know I'm not going to use duos. The metallic passion thing, of course, this is the one that she's decided. Oh, I'll also sell that with an eyeliner. Yeah, because it's the most done thing ever. The greeny one, do you know what? I, I don't hate it. I actually think it's quite pretty. Am I going to go off and buy it? No, I haven't lost my mind. I quite like the gold and black one. I actually think that's quite cool. There's something about that that just makes me think of like, I don't know, Thundercats or something. Oh, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. They could have just done that and I'd have been like, do you know what? It's somewhat at least new and interesting. But of course she has to do her lip gloss things and it's like, okay, this is all shit that we've seen before. Like, stop, stop gaslighting me and saying that this isn't new. Like, this is, this is done. This is done. Like, even the lipsticks, very pretty shades, 
but they've all been done before. I really don't care. And that's all I have to say about it, right? It's just the recycling of a collection. I get it. You're a high-end brand, right? You know that people are going to buy you, but there has to come a point where you have to justify the price, okay? There's loads of brands coming out on stream these days and they're competitively priced and they have good formulas. You look at the likes of Cosmic Brushes, Blend Bunny, Glam Light, there's loads of them out there, right? And they've innovative formulas, they've interesting color stories, they're coming out with something new all the time. What's happening with Pat? She has some great formulas, absolutely, but the color stories are not matching up to it. And I'm personally very frustrated because I think she's just an incredible artist, like the stuff that she does on catwalks. I need her to translate that. Bring that artistry, that innovation into the goddamn brand because she has some fantastic components in her brand. Like, for instance, her bronzer, my friend Daniela swears by it. She has bought it, I don't know how many times. It's, is it new, Tony? Comment down below, Daniela. You know, I think it's new, Tony. Um, and she swears by it and it's her favourite bronzer formula. And the thing is, like, it is, it's great. But like, there's a lot of great formulas out there. You're gonna have to innovate or innovate. There we go. My words are going. <laughs> Anyways, I hate it. Thanks, Pat. Next, please. This I have to talk about. I don't wear nail polish that much anymore. I kind of go through phases where I wear them every so often. But part of what caught my eye on this was just the presentation. I love, I love the little shelf. Can I buy the shelf? I want the shelf because that's absolutely adorable. This is Cleona Cosmetics. They have been kind of doing a lot of nail polishes, unfortunately. I can't get that here because, you know, nail polishes can't be sold from the US. Something to do with, I don't know, trade. I don't understand. I don't really tend to question these things too much. This is launching. Tuesday, October 1st at 3 p.m. ET. They're going to retail from $12.99 to $16.99 Canadian each. There's a bundle of all of them, which is $189.99. And this is, of course, part of their Halloween launch. It's their Unlucky 13 collection, which obviously includes 13 shades. And they just look so pretty. I can't wait to see these on the nails. Now, I don't have the best nails. I've kind of short, stubby nails. Although they've been getting a lot better these days. They're a lot more um, thick, strong, but there's definitely some shades in here that I think are really, really pretty. And I feel like the price of $12.99 to $16.99 Canadian, that's not bad. Like that isn't bad for the brand. I'd love to try their nail polishes. I have a soft spot for Cleona. They're not very easy to get over here. Uh, and they are quite expensive, in my opinion. I'd love to see um, like a European retailer stock them. Also, if anyone knows where I can get that cat shelf, <laughs> I don't know what I would store in it, but I really want it. I'm at that point in my life where I'm unapologetically a cat woman. That's so cute. I really like it. I feel like the way that they've displayed this, fabulous. Like 10 out of 10. I mean, when you think about it, 13 nail polishes for $189.99. That isn't bad at all. That's working out as less than $15 per shade. Like that's that's not bad at all. I think it's really, really cute. There's definitely shades there that are more interesting to me than others, but I could see how you could like layer them and use them together. So I don't hate it, quite like it. Oh, it has been forever and a day since I talked about Makeup Revolution, but here we are. Here we are, my friends. It was gonna happen at some point. They have done a collaboration with Alice in Wonderland. Here's the thing, anytime that Makeup Revolution does a collaboration, I do not trust the quality. Yeah, I just don't. And I think we're at that point where there's enough collaborations out there with whatever IP that we like, that we don't have to go off and buy whatever is out there. You know, just saying. There's quite a few things in there. There's the Mad Hatter eyeshadow palette for 19 pounds. 99. There's two different lipsticks. There's the Mad Hatter Fuchsia Pink one and then the Alice Impossible Nude. They're £5.99 each. There's the Wrong Alice Blusher for £6.99. The Fat Boys Lip Balms for £9.99. The Red Queen False Lashes for £7.99. The March Hair Skincare Headband for £6. And the Cheshire Cat Makeup Bag for £11.99. Let's talk about the eyeshadow palette. The shape, I hate it. The mismatched pans, I hate it. Is there cream shadows in there? It looks like it. There's marble things. Oh my god. 
so much of this is like a sensory overload the mismatching shades the fact that nothing goes together I get that there's a certain amount of that that is like mad hatter which fair enough I get that however just my reflexive responses I don't like it I really don't like it this bothers me on several levels I obviously I haven't supported Makeup Revolution in a really long time for lots of different reasons I'm not even going to get into it but um, absolutely not there's also no swatches on their website <laughs> <laughs> which I'm like you're not even trying to sell this to me it's terrible they spend more time looking at their packaging than on the actual contents of this Ah, uh, I just, I just can't. I hate it. Like, I just hate it. If you love it, fair enough. I, it, it does feel like they thought, put some thought into it. <laughs> and that's about it. I'm really angry this week. <laughs> Have fun editing, Teresa, I guess. I mean, the lipsticks. Can I just talk about the bullet components? I actually think they look so, so cute. Like those little, that baby blue with the birds. Gorgeous. It reminds me a little bit of this brand that used to exist. I don't think they exist anymore. Called Pretty Vulgar. And they a lot of eyeshadow palettes that were like bird themed it reminds me of that and I think that's actually really really cute the blush reminds me or is giving me more Willy Wonka vibes maybe that's just because of the weird sort of font and the fact that it's kind of swirling in that way I actually think the lipsticks are quite nice I'm not so sure about the shades and how they would look on me I personally wouldn't buy them but that's just me but I think the components look lovely again they didn't actually show these on which I found very very strange like why is there no swatches why is nobody wearing them same with the blush I don't know it looks like it's a sparkly blush as well so I guess it's like a blush highlighter thing relatively safe sort of a shade to go for in terms of the lip balm duos like that feels expensive nine pounds 99 for two of them they're fine I, I literally couldn't care less <laughs> Like, I'm just like, fine. But it's expensive, in my mind, for what that is. The lashes, again, mm, I think they're too expensive for what they are. Like, I'm just gonna say it. Just go to Amazon. You can get better ones, and you won't be buying from Revolution. Maybe the thing that I'm the most interested in is the Cheshire Cat bag, because mm, I've told you already, I'm a cat lady. I love it. And it does seem that there's, like, a reflective thing where it does kind of change colour to some extent, which is fine. Again, I'm not really gonna go off and buy it I don't need it I don't really tend to use makeup bags that often the little headband is kind of cute grand fine when I think of makeup revolution I just can't figure out who their core demographic is do you know what I mean like is are these for kids if if so I feel yeah probably pitched quite well <laughs> um but definitely not for my age group not that there's like an issue with that yeah, there's nothing here that I would look at and be like, oh my god, I'm a bit tempted, I like this. Mm, no, I just can't figure out who Makeup Revolution are targeting with these particular collaborations because Alice in Wonderland, it's a film that has been out for quite some time, so it's not like it's getting like newer kids. I just, I don't know, it's a strange one. It's not for me, obviously, I don't support the brand. There's nothing about this. I'm going to forget about this next week. My mind will repress this and just be like, it never happened. It was part of the fever dream. Yeah, just not for me. But we obviously have more Halloween collabs and this is from Sugar Drizzle Polish. They are an indie brand and this is their Happy Halloween Purple Pumpkin eyeshadow palette for $36. It is limited edition, by the way, and it has one matte, one swirled duochrome and seven duochromes. It's quite cute. I have nothing massively negative to say about this other than it's a little bit repetitive, but I get what it is. $36, that's not bad considering you're looking at eight duochromes. So it's working out as being like $4 per shade it's not bad at all again it does feel a little bit samey when you look at it swatched I do appreciate the fact that they've shown it inside and outside i.e the swatches outside of the house or outside in natural light I don't know what I'm talking about obviously having one matte means that this is not a one and done sort of an eyeshadow palette I do feel like some of those shades don't look as duochrome but it's fine on the fingers I feel like they swatch that little bit better they look a little bit more more interesting but I feel like $36 for an eyeshadow palette isn't isn't bad it's a very kind of cliched Halloween color story you know the purple and that little pop of orange but I'm not gonna get angry with them for that because they've kept the price down it's not bad it's limited edition this could be a nice little foray for people who haven't tried sugar drizzle polish I haven't but like 
it might be a good way to introduce yourself to the the brand. I don't hate it, but I'm not like obsessing about it either. You know, I think particularly now with Halloween, I want to see some little twists on these. But this is quite safe. Nothing wrong with it, but just not for me. But oh my God, I saw this and I died. This is Patrick Ta. <laughs> This is the Barbie Blush Duo and Lip Plumper Set. It's available now on Sephora US for $64. It's limited edition and it's new shades essentially of their Blush Duo and there's a plumping gloss. I don't care about the plumping gloss simply because, ugh, plumping gloss. It's by the way in the shade Malibu Dreamhouse and you do, do get a full size. It's nine milliliters. It's the Blush Duo that I'm looking at. Oh my God. It's She's a Barbie. That's that's the shade. That's what it's called. I, I just think... That that's so beautiful, that hot pink. Was this the best time to probably not? Should have probably come out a couple of months ago with the Barbie film, but at the same time, I also don't care. Barbie is forever and always. I think this is very, very pretty. Yeah, I like Patrick Ta's blush formula. I kind of wish that I could get just the blush jewel by itself without the plumping lip gloss, because I don't want the plumping lip gloss. Do you know what I mean? I love the little embossing imprint also of like Barbie's head. I think that's so, so so cute and they've shown it across a couple of different skin tones and it looks absolutely stunning. It looks so so pretty. I think probably it's too hot a pink for me because you know I am particularly right now warmed up death. <laughs> like oh I'm filled with plague and pestilence. I think this is absolutely stunning but a lot of brands have kind of done this before and even I feel like a lot of Patrick Ta's recent releases, I remember his holiday collection last year, there was a lot of hot pink in that which I was loving and I'm still loving right now, but it might be a little bit like repetitive. Do you know what I mean? But I still like it, I do, but $64, very expensive. I just feel like they should be sold separately because mm, not everyone is gonna necessarily want a plumping glass. But to be fair, I just feel like Patrick Ta is doing pretty well, interesting stuff. So I'm not against it. Then we have Natasha Denona. And you know me, lads. I love Natasha Denona. But I'm personally a bit like, meh, about this. This is the High Gen Tinted Lip Mask. There's three shades there. $25 each. They come in the shades Baby Nude, Candy Apple, and Berry Bliss. The Berry Bliss one is more of a mauve. And that's launching on October 1st. I am an affiliate with the brand. You can use my code. You can get money off. Blah, blah, blah. Whatever. But they are also coming out with the High Gen Face Brush. It's a dual-ended face and highlighting brush for $45. I'm going to start maybe by talking about about the lip masks. Yeah, why not? So they're talc free, they're D5 free, paraben free, cruelty free, they're mineral oil free and they're alcohol free, which I actually think isn't bad at all. There's hyaluronic acid in them, there's phytosqualine. I'm kind of intrigued by this, kind of, and the shades are quite nice, let's be real, and they look quite nice on the lips. However, I'm kind of a bit bored by lip masks. I know, and I'm, I'm a Natasha Denona ho. <laughs> Am I going to run off and buy this straight away? No, because I definitely don't need it. I feel like $25 is expensive for this. They don't seem to have any peptides. They don't say that there's peptides in this. But again, there could be more information on this coming. They say it's infused with hyaluronic acid. Yeah, that's kind of minimum at this point. Shades are pretty. I assume they're going to expand on them at some point. Weirdly, I think I'd go for Berry Bliss the most because I think that's quite pretty. Yeah, it's kind of safe. I feel like $25. It's up there with like Ula Henriksen. Although I think Ula Henriksen is a little bit cheaper. I really like the Ula Henriksen, by the way. If you haven't tried them, try the strawberry sorbet one. It's a peptide. It's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. But then when it comes to the brush, they say it's a shed-free, it better be, it's $45, a shed-free jewel-ended face and highlighting brush. And there's vegan fibre technology. And they say that you can use the large, dense, angled face brush. I love a dense brush for seamless liquid and powder foundation and cream blush applications. And then the highlighting brush is perfect for an unmatched targeted glow application. Can I be honest? I'm surprised that this didn't come out at the same time as their glow beautifier. You know, that recent highlighter, which by the way, stunning. Really, really like that. That is like a proper, you don't even realize you're wearing highlighter. It just looks like you're really glowy. No texture. Mwah. Beautiful. Really, really enjoy it. So I'm kind of surprised this is kind of coming out at the same time as lip masks and not the highlighter. So I'm a little bit confused about the way that they have done that. A little bit strange. I'm interested though. I, mm, 
I personally wouldn't get a dual ended brush. I know that some people love them. It's just for me. I don't know how to store them. I do know how to store them, right? Let me make this clear. I'm not just being like, do they do with them? Obviously there's a particular way of storing them, but I like to store my stuff in pots. And this would mean that there would always be one brush that's like stored on its bristles. And that just kind of bugs me. I get that for a lot of people, they love a dual ended brush. I just don't happen to be one of them. And that's okay. It just kind of bugs me. Um, I do like the shapes of them. They are interesting to me. But um, yeah, for the moment, I'm sorry. It's just not an Natasha Denona release that is appealing to me. And do you know what? That's good. It saves me a little bit of money. Then we have Bella Beauté Bar, and this is their Vamp palette. It's launching October 4th. The price is TBC. And these are pictures, by the way, that were taken from Bella Beauté Bar's own Instagram, but they reposted from Bad to the Brow. So I wanted to make that really, really clear. I'm kind of surprised that they're doing this because we literally, was it just last week or the week before that I just talked about them and their Poison Garden palette, and they had a bunch of singles. I like Bella Beauté Bar. I think their quality is really, really good. However, it's kind of a lot of launches. It's a lot of launches. Now, that being said, remember how I talked about She Glam and I was like, oh, it's a little bit cliche doing reds and blacks, whatever. Bella Beauté Bar have taken that idea of that red, that black, but they've kind of elevated it and they've added in some really interesting blue-toned greys, those lovely little lavenders, some sort of holochromes in there. And can we just say the way that, by the way, Bad to the Brow has photographed this. Oh, such a talent. Absolutely gorgeous. That holochrome shade, that glittery I I want to have children with it <laughs> it's absolutely beautiful I don't need this I know I don't I know I don't I'm convincing myself of that at the moment but I feel like this is quite an elevated palette now depending upon the price if this was like $70 I personally wouldn't buy it just because I have so much in my collection but if you're looking for a nice Halloween palette that I can even see bits of this translating into spring etc into Christmas fabulous. I just keep looking at that holochrome. It's making eye contact with me. It's really weird. It's just like, take me home, Teresa. No, I'm not taking you home. I don't need you. <laughs> don't need you in my life. But I do think it's quite, quite interesting. And it's definitely a more innovative take on that idea of vamp. Like when you think of vamp, you do think of blacks, greys, reds. But I think that addition of those more kind of bluey toned greys and the purples just makes it a little bit more interesting. I like Bella Beauté Bar, but I do need them to slow down because it, it is a lot. And I guess that this is the kind of the whole thing with the market is just let's do a million and one things, but we don't need a million and one things. I personally get a little bit overwhelmed, but um, yeah, I like this. I think it's very, very pretty, but I'm not going to be getting it because I don't need it. Oh, okay, this next one. I actually, I could have filmed earlier, but I was literally, I was waiting for this to come out because they hadn't shown the pictures of this. And I was like, I know I'm going to have to cover this. This is ColourPop and Stranger Things. And yeah, they've launched it. It's available right now. There's a palette for $26. There's the Ultra Glossy Lip Kit for $28. But they say it's a $30 value and yet they're not selling the lip glosses separately. So make that make sense. There's also the Monster Chrome Liquid Shadow Kit for $20, but they say it's a $26 full value again. There's two liquid shadows, but they're not selling them separately. Make it make sense. Waffle Lip Mask for $12. The Hawkins Milk Liquid Highlighter for $12. And the Byers Cream Blush for $14. You can get the full collection for $99 and they say it's a $112 value. So there you go. I'm going to start this by saying that I have tried to watch Stranger Things, but I just couldn't get into it. I, it's, it's just not for me. So I'm just going to talk about the makeup itself and what I think of it. As to those of you who have watched the show and whether you think that this is linking with the IP. Will you let me know? Because I am interested. Let's start by talking about the eyeshadow palette. So they've obviously put a little bit of money in here by doing the embossing and I've looked a little bit into it. The yellow is like obviously a waffle and apparently Eleven loves waffle. There we go. I've done my research. Give me credit. It's fine. I do find that Colourpop have a tendency to kind of, how do I say this? Like they make their eyeshadows a lot fairer than is necessary. So it's not wildly inclusive. Like these tones 
tones are going to show up on me no problem but I feel like people who have deeper skin tones they might struggle a little bit because when we're looking at deeper deeper shades in there there's just essentially two deep shades which is that kind of darker red and that black and beyond that the rest are like metallic-y glitters it's really odd because even when you see them swatched you're like okay springtime <laughs> <laughs> on one side and then ooh almost twilight vibes so I'd love to know how much of this is almost like duping the twilight collection that they have it's fine like it's I'm sorry I'm gonna say it, a little bit forgettable it's not for me I don't have any major love of the IP so I'm not looking at this and kind of going oh my god I know Mac did a Stranger Things collab so there's bits of this that's kind of ringing a bell to some extent but I just don't think it's wildly interesting the lip glosses they look okay I feel like they've put a lot of effort into the actual packaging of them like that's quite impressive personally I don't think there's anything major to talk about in terms of the lip glosses themselves you can kind of see the slight distinction between each of these I feel like they should have sold these separately as well as selling them in a trio just because it doesn't make a huge amount of sense to just sell them as a trio in and of itself it's fine I don't really care <laughs> I'm not gonna faff on about it too much the chrome liquid shadows this is slightly more interesting in the sense that we don't see Colourpop doing this that often also when I'm looking at this the monster all I can think of and I know this is not what they're meant to be doing is uh, the cordyceps from The Last of Us because it looks so much like that maybe it's just me but I didn't watch a lot into Stranger Things I just found it dull don't hate me I just I found it dull I <laughs> I have a very poor attention span. The shades are kind of, you know, we've seen them a million times before. If you've any sort of liquid duo chromey shadows, you probably have them already. The way that they have photographed this is also very, very lackluster, but I just find they tend to just way oversaturate their photographs to the point that you're like, what is going on here? Humanoid looks okay. You know, it's like that pink to green. We've seen it a million times before. Interdimensional, again, same thing. We've seen it a million times before. The packaging though, very, very, good let's be real I feel like that looks quite nice it's up there with the MAC packaging when you see on the eye I'm gonna say it it looks meh you know like there's nothing here that I'd be like oh this is really really cool I feel like if I wore this on my eye nobody would ask me <laughs> what I had on my eye or maybe they would just to be like let me avoid that yeah it's just it looks a bit mm, it doesn't look great like you know and I get like obviously it's chromey so it's going to show up a lot of texture but I have textured eyelids anyways and I'm looking at this just kind of going oh no this is not for you Teresa this is not for you like it's so bad it's making my voice break so let us move on the waffle lip mask apparently again that's down to 11 loving waffles are they just coming out with a lip mask with every single collection it seems so I did check by the way to see if this is like scented or flavoured it doesn't seem to be they've got their general thing of like saying oh there's shea butter in it and it's apparently a cute little component so there you go the liquid highlighter what a choice like a silvery highlighter who is that meant to look good on like very very strange my goodness like oh I don't know I don't know who that's for it's grand the way that they're by the way presenting this the photography on this looks fantastic they've obviously spent a lot of time on this the component the presentation of it really really good like being in the little milk container adorable fab and then beyond that I'm just like hmm this is not a highlighter this feels very very lackluster and let's be real ashy 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 why when you have a, a collection that has usually quite a big fan base and I say this all the time why have you just got one shade of a highlighter could you please be more inclusive what the hell is going on here yeah I don't care I'm, I'm moving on back we go to PH blushes I, I don't even know what to say about this no I do I hate it I hate it I hate it I hate it it initially looks kind of interesting that you're like oh a purple blush thank you We're I've been talking about inclusivity and a purple blush on a deeper skin tone looks absolutely stunning but this isn't what it is it's fucking PH bam and it's gonna make you pink that's all it is. I just, I can't, I can't. That's the second pH thing this week. And I'm livid. I just can't. Why are they doing this? I, I don't, mm -mm, absolutely not hate it. <laughs> no. Right, the collection overall, like I said, I'm not a Stranger Things fan, so I can't really speak as to how well this is representing the IP. There's individual components to this that I think are okay, but overall, for me, this is quite forgettable. There's nothing here that I'm like, oh my God, I must get this. The eyeshadow palette can do without. The um liquid eyeshadows <sighs> whatever I think they're actually they look kind of cheap look kind of tacky it reminds me a little bit of when XX Revolution tried to do their their duochrome it's the same sort of thing the 
I think the best thing is probably the lip mask and even that like it's at an absolute push the lip glosses are okay they should have done them singularly I fucking abhor I hate that blush I hate it so so much they had an opportunity to do a nice cream purple blush they could have done that they could have done that and then they did this ph absolute travesty the highlighter is not inclusive i don't get it um i want to move on with my life i absolutely hate it thanks but no thanks we're now moving on to essentially holiday stuff this is fenty and there's a whole bunch of she called it her holiday hustle and my god the woman is hustling there's a lot of stuff now some of this is like existing stuff that is mixed in with new stuff so i'm gonna try and kind of jump through as much of it as possible but as an overview this isn't all of it by the way this is just the stuff that i was like fuck it i feel like talking about this stuff there's a glass bomb vault full-size universal lip luminizer 10 piece set for 175 euro there's the Gloss Balm Swirl Twisted Lip Luminizer for €28. Euro. The Plush Puddin Intensive Recovery Lip Mask for €27. Euro. There's a new shade or scent in that. It's Salted Caramel. Fenty's Most Wanted 3-Piece Lip Face and Eye Set for €41. Euro. The It's Riri Season 3-Piece Lip Set for €58. Euro. Oh my god, so many words, it's hard. Fruit Quenchers Hydrating and Strengthening Lip Oil Trio for €61. Euro. And then the Glossy Posse Volume 7.0 Full Size Gloss Balm Trio for €40. 47 euro. Let's talk about the Gloss Bomb Vault Full Size Universal Lip Luminizers. There's 10 in these. It's 175 euro, right? Now, I'm, I'm going to show you up on your screen. There are some existing shades. So we have the Gloss Bomb Heat Universal Lip Luminizer and Plumper, existing shades of Fussy, but there's new shades also of Roastum, Hot Cherry, and Purple Pepper. So I guess there's three new shades in there out of the Gloss Bomb Heats. But there's also the Gloss Balm Universal Lip Luminizers. And there's existing shades of Diamond Milk, Cake Shake, Trophy Wife. But then there's two new shades as well of Idolize You and Smoke Quartz. And there's an existing shade of the Gloss Balm Ice Cooling Lip Luminizer in Cold Hearted. So I suppose if you're new to the brand, this might be good. There's quite a few newer shades in there as well. Decent value, 175 euro for 10 of the shades. So it's working out as being 17 euro 50 per shade you're getting the full weight of nine mil per shade that's not bad and I will say I feel like her lip gloss formula is probably the best thing that she has it's a lot though 175 euro for a vault of lip glosses who's who's using a lip vault who's who's doing that it reminds me a little bit of when NYX remember when NYX and we still have to hear from them or maybe we have heard from them but I've just skipped it oh <laughs> maybe I've repressed those memories but remember when NYX every single year would be like here's our lip lingerie set and it was like 12 lip Lip glosses don't need them don't need them this feels like a lot but there you go so let's talk then about the gloss bomb swirl twisted lip luminizer for 28 euro here's the thing i was looking into the details it's not ready yet or it's not available yet what they have done is they've taken existing shades and just swirled them together so the, the existing shades of fussy and fuchsia so what i'm saying is if you like this just take the existing shades that you have this is so lazy is it just me maybe it's just me oh am i the villain who knows Oh, she's doing a lot of stuff and I'm wondering, maybe this is a conspiracy theory, but there's obviously a lot of stuff going on in the music industry right now with the ditty of it all and, you know, the various ways in which people are connected and Rihanna is not really that connected to him, but she's connected to him through Jay-Z. So I'm wondering if there's just like a lot of quickly, let's get a lot of stuff out because I know she's done massive Christmas sets in the past, but this feels even bigger than before. So I'm wondering how much of this is a distraction. Very strange. Then then there's the plush pudding whatever intensive recovery lip mask she has three shades of these or three scents of these already this is just an extension this is salted caramel it's 27 euro I don't know about you but that seems very very expensive I mean it's fine it's a lip mask by the way 27 euro for a lip mask I don't know maybe I'm poor but that seems like a lot of money for a lip mask I, I personally wouldn't but there you go the Fenty's most wanted three piece lip face and eye kit that's the 40 one euro so they're existing things it's the gloss bomb in hot chocolate there's the kilowatt mini highlighter which i thought was quite interesting because i thought they'd gotten rid of that but i guess that's back it's just a mini of a uh, water brat and the hella thick volumizing mascara so they've just got minis of two of them and 
I think a full size of the gloss bomb so I'm not sure how good that is in terms of value it doesn't feel like it's the absolute best value for 41 euro probably the better value is the Riri's one which is essentially where she's got the gloss bomb in Riri the icon velvet liquid lipstick in Riri and the gloss sticks in Riri for 58 euro which is still quite expensive I feel like she should do that for all of the shades just to make it a little bit easier it's grand but I think if if you like her stuff you probably already have it so it's a bit unnecessary the fruit quenchers hydrating and strengthening lip oil trio those are by the way new shades they've got Barbados cherry Kalahari melon and passion fruit I don't know I'm, I'm personally not that bothered by that and I feel like that's a lot of money although I suppose maybe for three of them together it's like 20 euro each but it just feels like 61 euro for lip oils in one go is quite a bit maybe I'm poor who knows but and I spend a lot but I'm just like mm, I don't know of course she's got her glossy posse and this is the volume 7.0 which I'm like how are we in the seventh iteration this is so strange it's 47 euro but there is a new shade the existing shades are hot cherry and fenty glow and the new shade is dragon mammy in or mommy I guess depending upon the way that you pronounce it gloss bomb lip luminizer and that's 47 euro it's fine like that's all I can say there's nothing about this that is wildly interesting to me personally I feel like all of these launches and like I said there's a lot more there was like hair care there was skin care there there was like I'd say at least another seven or eight things that I could have included that I was like I'm just not gonna include let's just do the absolute bare bones it felt a bit like let's throw stuff at the wall and see what will stick definitely not necessary personally think it's a little bit mm. I, I'll be skipping on this. There's nothing that's interesting to me as part of this Fenty collection. But the very last thing that I want to talk about is an advent calendar that is coming out and it's with Gloss Gods. It's available right now for pre-order. You guys know I am an affiliate with the brand. Here's the thing. Last year I got their two advent calendars and I'm going to say I was a bit disappointed because they had made promises and I felt they didn't quite live up to them. And here's the thing. The, the owner, Mariella, she's fabulous, very proactive. She understands that critique is constructive. It's it's not out there as being destructive and it's really really clear I gave them very detailed feedback and they actually listened like Marielle actually was like yeah we listened to what you said and I'm oh my god I'm so excited about this so this is available right now you can get them in three different types there's the light the medium and the deep skin that was one of my critiques of like it's going to depend as to where you are with your skin tones as to what something is going to work for you. You're going to get 24 full size Gloss Gods products. No minis, no dupes, whatever. And there's some best sellers, but there's, there's some stuff that's coming back, right? Now, if you don't want to know spoilers, because I did say to them, people who are fans like myself, they don't want to be duping themselves. They're, they're going to want to know what's going on. So close your eyes close your ears. This is what's going on. So in addition to that limited edition holiday cosmetic bag, here's what's in there. The M01 Sharp Eyeliner Brush, which exists, that's part of their collection. But here's the new things, an M02 Angled Detail Brush, an M03 Detail Smudge Brush, an M04 Round Buff Brush, all of those are new. Then they have the M06 Buff and Blend Brush. That exists. I love it. I'm happy to be getting another one. By the way, I did buy this. I mean, I'm ridiculous. The M10 Flat Blending Brush. So that's new. The M15 Big Blending Face and Cheek Brush. That's existing. A brand new M18 Angled Cheek Brush. That's new. The Soft Blending sponge which is new. The things that do exist within their brand already are things like their liquid love blushes and sculpts and they have said that the colour that you get will depend upon your skin tone so they've thought about that. They have the That Base Crease Killer 3.5 which is a new colour. The Liquid Love Lip Oil in the shade Smirk and Smitten. They're both new by the way. The Power Liner in the shade Freedom so that's existing. Power Hair Clips those are new. And then we have Two new diamond pigments, one in Starlight and one in Hoarfrost. There's a Secret Potion Priming Lotion, which is new. Very excited about that. They've also three of their new pop shadows. The Green Pop, the Pink Pop and the Peach Pop. Now I can say I've tried these. I have these and I love them. I think they're absolutely fantastic. So even though I've got this, what I'm doing... <laughs> <laughs> what I'm doing is, uh, and I'll do an unboxing if anyone cares. Does anyone want me opening an ad from Calder? I'm going to do it anyways. Why not? For the content. But I'm going to put those aside as a present from a friend, Daniela, because I think she'll really enjoy them. 
But here's the superstar comeback. And this is the one, and I and I harassed Mariella for this. I was like, you're in the nicest way possible an idiot for getting rid of the Vintage Glam. The Vintage Glam is this beautiful purple palette, absolutely gorgeous, and it's coming back as part of this album calendar. <laughs> I'm cackling away. I'm so excited. I have the Vintage Glam myself, but you know what? I'm delighted to have it again in my collection. I'll probably gift it to a friend. Uh, I'm very excited. I think that was fantastic. And there's a new eyeshadow palette, a Molten Metals eyeshadow palette. So this time they have properly brought back stuff that is much desired. People have been looking for that Vintage Glam to come back. There's some proper new, new things in here. Well done. They've listened. And I think the price of €179.95, it is pricey, but you're getting 24 products in there. So that's averaging out as €5 Euro per product. And we're talking about brushes, liners, eyeshadows, the whole bunches of things. I'm very excited about this. Yes, there's stuff here that's duping me in terms of the um, eyeshadow palettes, but I'm putting them aside for gifts. And there's enough new stuff in there of brushes, etc., because I really like their brushes, that I'm I'm quite happy. I think they've done this so, so well. Mwah, fantastic. You guys know I'm an affiliate with the brand, but I'll also tell them if I'm not happy with things, and I do appreciate the fact that they do listen. Well done, Gloss Gods. I'm very excited. But uh, yeah, I will open this when it comes. I'm very excited. Can't wait. I'm so excited about this Molten Metals, because I feel like they're, they're metallic-y, duochrome formula. Like I can, I can feel my heart beating. I'm like, yes, mm, smother yourself in it. Thank goodness the steroids are done. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm excited about this. But my gorgeous friends, that is it. There's quite a few things. I will say, I felt like I was kind of like scraping the bottle, bottom of the ba barrel this week. I didn't get to Glamlight because they haven't revealed their full Coca-Cola collection. So I guess I'll get into that next week. So I guess we've something to look forward to. I didn't want to talk about their. Was it the Tootsie? They're Twinkies. Twinkies! I'm Irish. I don't understand what a Twinkie is. Um, but yeah, I didn't want to talk about that because it felt a bit boring. So I do what I want over on my channel. But a massive thank you for everyone for watching. I do have my favourite comment. This is from the lovely Nancy who said, The joy I feel inside on Saturday mornings when I see you have a new upload is palpable. Thank you always for making time to do any content, Nancy. You've no idea. When I saw this content, like this comment, I screenshot it because I'm such a sad person. I was like, oh my God, this is so beautiful. Because by the way, by the time that I had uploaded um, releases and rants last week, I was absolutely dying. I was so sick. I'm still not quite right. But seeing those little comments, oh my God, you've no idea. Like it, mm, my stupid, stupid heart isn't able for it. So for all of you guys who do comment uh, below, I do read all of them. I don't necessarily always get the chance to comment because I work two jobs etc but I read them all I see them I so appreciate it and I see when you guys are coming back it means so so much to me so thank you so much but my gorgeous friends that is it thank you so much for watching do please like comment and subscribe turn on that notification bell and do please share because sharing is caring except of course for STDs in which case just wrap it up don't be gross but that's it that's the end of the video and I will see you guys in the next one bye